It was time for an update on the CO2 experiment, which has been going on well now for six weeks. There was a mistake discovered in our water chemistry, and it's nothing devastating, but it did explain some strength that, strange things that I observed over time. And coming on the heels of a disaster that wasn't the nitrogen cycle experiment, I figured it was worth sorting this out with you. So here's what happened. I sourced most of the water from the well. A year ago, I tested the water that was coming from this source and found that the ranges were optimal to grow plants. A pH of about 7.0, a KH of just over 40, a GH above 30. While this is perfect for buffering, I would either cut this for bottled or spring water or a commercial product that would jump up the KH and the GH. I didn't think the chemistry would change over a year, but I began discovering some automatic of leaf melt as well as fluctuations in pH, and I started getting worried about both the CO2 and the liquid carbon additives. I started thinking they were affecting the tank in a way that I didn't grasp. You kind of expect that from CO2, not so much from liquid carbon. So I did a whole bunch of research and wasted a whole bunch of time and finally tested my well water. I found that the pH was much lower, the KH and the GH were nearly at zero. I have no explanation for why. So obviously my old formula for preparing water for the planet tanks wasn't doing the trick. I've since fixed this and things seem to be getting much better. Because of this, I figured it was a decent chance to talk a little bit about the relationship between KH, pH, and GH. Or as somebody put it on the web, it's the Bermuda Triangle of the aquarium hobby. Affecting one of these parameters will affect the other. So let's start with pH, an acronym for per hydron, or percentage hydrogen, which runs about a logarithmic scale. In other words, a pH of 6.0 is not one time more acidic than 7.0, it's actually 10 times more acidic. Furthermore, if you go from a pH of 7.0 to 5.0, it's actually 100 times more acidic. Now, by adding carbonic acid from a pressurized CO2 system and nitric acid, which comes from a ni uh, nitrates, a uh, byproduct of the nitrogen cycle, we're effectively dropping the pH over time. We deal with this with alkalinity, and alkalinity and basic are not the same thing. Alkaline water simply means that we have a decent buffer in place to stop fluctuations of pH. The actual opposite of acid is base, or anything above 7.0, but that terminology is not frequently used in a, the aquarium hobby. Alkalinity has to do with minerals in the aquarium. If you want to increase uh, alkalinity, you can use a commercial product or add something like baking soda, though I wouldn't recommend it as the actual ratio of bicarbonate and water can be difficult to estimate. Also, there are fish that wouldn't appreciate the added sodium. Probably most fish, if not all fish, wouldn't appreciate the added sodium. So with alkalinity, we're really talking about two measurements. KH, which is carbonate hard, uh, hardness, and GH, which is general hardness which refers to the dissolved concentration of calcium, magnesium, and other mineral ions. Uh, this measurement of magnesium chloride, sodium sulfur, potassium, a couple of those you probably recognize uh, as plant nutrients and essential to fish diet. So when dealing with something like pressurized CO2, which creates carbonic acid, and something which is mildly present in this experiment, which is nitric acid, it isn't much of an issue other than the fact that it causes leaf melt. But for the regular aquarius out there who's keeping fish and plants and wants to introduce CO2 in some way, this can become a huge problem. Ideally, you want to keep pH between 6.8 and 7.2, depending on the fish and plants that you're keeping. And of course, this can change per species. Uh, KH should be kept around 150 parts per million. 
GA should be kept around 80 to 120 parts per million, depending on who you talk to. And again, I can't stress this enough. This is the reason you have to go and research your fish. All of this can change depending on the species of fish you're keeping. Some can handle soft water and others can't. There's a reason you often see community tanks that are mixed with tetras and rasboras and corridoras and then on other occasions you have primers that don't meet the standards of the livestock that are being kept. Uh, live bearers. Guppies, for example. And on a trivial note, since we just came to the conclusion of the first nitrogen cycle experiment, when you're dealing with the KH, GH, and PH, filtration bacteria such as nitrosomonas and nitrobacter tend to work better in hard water aquariums. This won't really crash your tank, but it's something to keep in mind while dealing with the KH and GH parameters if you're trying to cycle up your tank and get it ready for fish. As always, find us on social media. Visit thenatureaquarium.com, thenatureaquarium.com. Uh, I'll probably do a write-up, one of us will, uh, in the CO2 experiment, and it'll probably be something added to the blog because of this.